Uh, Jay, I wanted to point out something at practice. Uh, of course, we know what happened in the first goal yesterday against, uh, but Dylan Holloway sniped one, and you kind of led the applause. I just wanted to talk about the little things like that that kind of go a long way for a young player. That's pretty detailed for you, Tony, to pick up on that. <laughs> wow, good for you. Uh, nothing. It was a nice goal, so I just banged on the banged on the wall, and you know what? Uh, you mentioned um, the turnover. Those things happen. He's a younger player. We had lots of game left. We recovered from it. Uh, it's not the primary reason we didn't win the game. Um, but those are learning moments for younger players. And what I know about Dylan is he's a conscientious, hardworking person. He'll learn from that moment and get better because of it. I got a question about Jack Campbell. Okay. Anytime his teammates bring him up, they just instantly light up. We talked to Kyler today, talked to uh, some people on the side. And every time they mention soup, yeah. There's a huge smile. What does that mean in the group when somebody's able to have that much of an impact? Yeah, I think he's a popular teammate, uh, just the way he carries himself. Um, you know, he's a, he's a battler. I think he's someone who's battled his entire career, and um, that resonates with the rest of the team. Um, Yamamoto, he, he's having trouble scoring goals just like he did the meeting last year. Is there, why is that? Um, well, first of all, Jim, I, I thought he missed a good portion of training camp, which set him back a little bit. Um, you know, but he's he's finding himself in those scoring chances for. He's doing uh, some good things to be able to be in that position. I think uh, for someone like him, the first one will probably be an ugly one, and then it'll open the floodgates. Um, but he is, you know, he's doing some other things on the ice and. You know, he was a big part of our team winning five games in a row. You mentioned that last year, and so does Leon. He, like he does all those things. We notice those things now, yeah. but we didn't before. Yeah. But can a guy play in the top six with maybe the second best player in the league, Leon, and not score? You can when the team won five games in a row. Okay. And when he did things like uh, create a turnover on the winning goal in, in Chicago. So, uh, yes, you can. And. Uh, yeah. You know, Yamo's a valued member of our team, and while it hasn't gone in for him, like it hasn't gone in for a few other guys, um, you know, that doesn't mean his game is only measured by the boxcar statistics. Kyler, I was going to say, Kyler spoke of how your confidence in him helps give him confidence. Uh, other situations, a guy might be pulled off the top six, but uh, you maybe just describe you know, how much you believe in him and that it will lead to what you expect, which is a good season. Yeah, well, I, I do have belief in him. We, and that belief um, comes from shared circumstances. Um, you know, I've, I've seen what he can do uh, at two different levels. I think, um, you know, the big thing is I'd go back to what I said to Jim. The team won five games in a row. And, uh, you know, while he might not have the scoring numbers he, he wanted, uh, he helped us win those games. And uh, for us, um, you know, we, we know it's a matter of time for him. I, like I said to Jim, too, I think uh, it, the first one is probably not going to be a tic-tac-toe. It's going to be going to a hard area, getting a stick on a puck, getting your nose dirty to find offensive success. And um, if he sticks with it, just like a couple other guys that haven't found the back of the net like they've wanted to early, um, you go to those hard areas, usually get rewarded. Do you lose a tough one last night, but you got to play at two o'clock tomorrow? How do you treat today in terms of, you know, how much time do you look back at yesterday's game and go over that, and how much time do you spend focusing on tomorrow? Well, I think um, win or lose, the coaching staff and the way we operate the day after a game is we're consistent. We're consistent in our process. We're co consistent in trying to find some progress. Um, so today we had a good meeting. Uh, we went out on the ice, got our, our legs moving a little bit. It wasn't long. And uh, we turned the page and get ready for a really good Dallas Stars team. Uh, but that said, uh, we don't just uh, not do our work because we didn't find the win. We uh, go over that game with a uh, fine tooth comb and, and try and give our team something that they can hang their hat on in order to improve. How long, how long does the seven seconds linger? <laughs> how, how long does it linger? Well, you, no one's happy uh, but, uh, about not finding the result we wanted last night. Um, but I think 
over the course of an 82 uh, game schedule sometimes stuff happens uh, last night it did it's about using that as a, a learning tool um, for us so that we can improve and um, you know I'm confident that we're going to win a lot more of those games than lose them does well, it make that, it easier when the mistakes you were making last night for goals were young players correctable by, <laughs> by Nima Linen on the set play yeah. and then Dylan giving the puck away in the neutral zone I, I mean Ryan McLeod made it is yeah. easier than if it was a veteran you're going oh no, no, I didn't sleep any easier oh, knowing okay. the age of those players. Uh, but do I understand? Yeah, yeah I do understand. Um, but what we're trying to build is is something sustainable over time here, uh, a, a winning machine that is uh, continues to get better each and every day. And, um, you know, uh, sometimes uh, mistakes like that are a necessary step in order for growth. And uh, for us, um, as I said, we're not just uh, sweeping anything under the rug. We deal with it. We uh, we talk about it, and we try and equip our players with tools that they can help them succeed the next time we find ourselves in that situation. And, and you mentioned Dylan. He's played seven games, but he's only getting an average of seven minutes a game. Last night he got four. Yeah. At what point does the coach weigh the, you know, or the, does yeah, I think the he was GM, around five last yeah, night. But the GM um, weigh it and say, look, if he's only going to get that many minutes, maybe he should be playing somewhere. You know what, I think um, when you go to those things, the game before I think it was around the 10 minute yeah. mark, sometimes the way the game is played dictates how people are used. Um, in Chicago, for example, um, in that game, I think there were 17 minor penalties. He took two minor penalties. He played eight minutes that game. Um, so that was, a, that was a factor in how many minutes he played in that game. I think last night what happened was, um, uh, you know, uh, our team was rolling. We had a really good second period. We go into the third period, and the other team went down to three lines. Um, you know, we took a penalty with with that group on the ice. Not that it was anybody's fault or anything like that. And then it just kind of became a three line game. And uh, you know, when you're when you're in the thick of the battle, you're worried about trying to win the game that night, and then worry about other stuff afterwards. I think Dylan's in a good spot. He's learning. Uh, what the day in day out life in the National Hockey League is about. I expect him to continue to grow and take steps. I'm bullish on him as a player. And, um, you know, as I said, last night was a learning experience for him, but it was a learning experience for our team as well. Jay, can, you, uh, sorry, yeah. can you explain why it kind of became a three line game for you when you guys did have the, the lead? Just how that kind of worked for me? Well, the, other, the way the other team rolled their lines okay. out, DMB. Yeah. So they, they flipped their lines around. And they buried three players in the third period there. And um, we didn't get a, enough shifts for our fourth line last night. Uh, but I thought it was a function of the way the, the third period and was played. You, you get Dylan playing center. Mm -hmm. And he played center in college. Yeah. He's played wing, too. Yeah. Is that going to be an adjustment for a young player all of a sudden, whether it's I the think the benefit. I think the benefit with him playing in the middle is that he touches the puck a lot. Uh, it's, uh, you know, he's starting with a, um, you know, he's a gifted skater, so it allows him to um, build some speed from underneath. And uh, I think that line's given us some good minutes. There's There's been some learning experiences. They were on the ice for two penalties against last night. That's that's one thing. Um, but they, they found a way to score a goal in two straight games. Got to give credit to Derek Ryan and, and, and Devin Shore uh, for how they're playing as well. And, uh, you know, as I said, um, last night's circumstances not ideal. Team's coming off uh, five wins in a row. We're a humble group. We're going to use last night as a learning experience and uh, get better because we know that we have a really good team in the Dallas Stars coming in tomorrow. So on the road trip, all three of your winning goals were scored with eight minutes less or fewer. Yep. Last night, the Devils scored, obviously, with eight minutes less, you know, four minutes less yep. informers of me. Generally, though, like I would feel like you guys would be a team that would say, yeah, tied with 10 minutes left, five minutes left, bring it on. We're mm -hmm. comfortable. Most nights we're going to get that goal. Yeah, I, well, I mean, the, that's what it also gets lost is the team we lost to is eight and three. You know, they're that they're they have that record for a reason. Uh, I thought both teams punched yesterday. Um, you know, there's a, a few mistakes that led to goals against for us that we felt we could clean up. Uh, obviously, it's not ideal to 
give a goal up and then immediately give a, a goal up on, on the ensuing faceoff. Um, as I said, it's a learning experience for our group. Jay, just wanted to ask you one question about Marcus. You kind of mentioned him being on the ice for that fourth goal. Just overall, especially the last three games, where his you know, minutes have gone up a little bit, how would you judge his play? Yeah, I mean, Marcus would be the first guy um, to say that he'd like to have that read back on that, that winning goal against. It's something we talk about a lot, and uh, it happened. They made a good play, and uh, he's going to learn from it. In terms of his play, I think he adds a physical element to our group. Um, he adds to the penalty kill. He's willing to be in shot lanes, and uh, he's hard around our blue paint. So um, just like Dylan, he's a young player finding his footing in the National Hockey League. There's going to be lessons learned along the way, just as there has been for every uh, good NHL veteran. Uh, there's lessons to be learned, and uh, you know he's a conscientious person, and he works hard. He'll be fine. He says he's handling the puck better. on my stick, get it around the boards and get it out, or, or but he seems like he's you know what I, the puck, but maybe that's because he's playing with Barry, he has a good puck handler, and, and I can get it to Barry. Yeah, I think sometimes just anytime you're a young player in the league, the more experience you gain, the more the game slows down for you a little bit. Um, and, uh, you know, he's worked on his puck polish, and, you know, uh, he's made some good plays, and he's been a good player for us. He's also... Uh, been an important part of us winning those five games in a row and important part of where we sit today as a team. Good, thanks.